Siru, Siri, Siri. 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. Do you need it? A better question, should you get it? Oh, Su Ray. You pronounce it Su Ray. Su Ray, purveyor of crazy cheap lenses that do some pretty crazy stuff. This is their 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. I just picked it up like a week ago. I wanted to get that super sweet lens flare. You know, JJ Abrams style. Cue the B roll. If you're not familiar with anamorphic lenses, essentially it's a cinematic lens format. So what it does is stretches the aspect to get that really nice cinematic look. That's why you have that crazy lens inside, that shape that you don't get in other lenses. And it's part of that shape too that gives you that really cool flare. Now like I mentioned, this is a J.J. Abrams thing, he's notorious for just killing flares in his movies. So much so that apparently his wife had to tell him to stop. There's just too much flares. But anamorphic has been around for a long time. This is no new technology. It's not some new design or anything. It's just, you know, really it's just kind of becoming popular again. But what makes the Su Ray such a big deal is its price. Paid $5.99 for this lens. Now in the world of anamorphic lenses, that's insane. You're usually looking at like tens of thousands of dollars for proper cinema, full frame, mind you. Full frame, we'll get back to that, that's a big deal. Cinema anamorphic lenses. So this little monster is kind of a game changer, especially for smaller time independent photographers and filmmakers like myself. And that's why it might be appealing to you. We're gonna put this lens down for a second. We're gonna put it on that camera, and I'll be back when it's darker to get some more of that flare and talk a little bit about how this works while you're looking at me through it. Get ready to look at me through it. So this is why I wanted to wait till night. More contrast, more of that flare. So that's something to note about a lens like this. You can get a little bit more from higher end anamorphics, but at this price level, you can't expect too much. Come on. To really get the most of the flares, you need some high contrast atmospheres. You need for the ambiance to be set and it needs to be dark everywhere, high contrast with light coming in at hard points. It needs to be more direct, hard light. That oval, oblong shape is to compress everything in, squeeze everything in this way while leaving the aspect ratio top to bottom still about the same. Hence why the flares are horizontal. But because of that aspect ratio, the lens flaring, you really don't want to use an anamorphic for that much outside of cinema. I mean, except for social and stuff like that, where you don't really have to be critiqued on technical photography. I guess you could use an anamorphic for photos, but I got it for cinema. That's all that makes sense for me. So with that said, pros and cons make sense. Pro, the price, the price, so cheap. For comparison, a Cook 50 millimeter, which is what this is, anamorphic lens, 32, yeah, $32,000. 599, $32,000. I don't know about you, but real estate gigs, social media stuff, it doesn't pay for $32,000 lenses. By the way, if you buy this on a B&H, non-cancelable, non-refundable. I can refund that, I can return it. It's only $5.99, nobody cares. Pro number two, construction. 
The thing is sturdy. At $5.99, that's the same price as the kind of cheap bargain, uh, not bargain, but the FE 85mm lens that you can get from Sony Alpha. And the thing's nice. It definitely doesn't make you want to go buy that $1,800 G Master. But that Sony, it's plastic. This is metal construction. This feels more quality. It's nicer. Pro number three. Super, super smooth focus rings. Aperture ring, focus, butter, glides, so nice. This thing feels like it should be about 300 bucks more. And four, as if I haven't mentioned it enough, blares. Con number one. One, manual focus only. Now for legit cinema geeks out there and photographers who like to you know, pull their own focus, that's not a big deal and I get it and I understand why it's not. A lot of times, you know, myself, if I'm doing a set shot, static subject, I'll use manual focus, won't use auto, just don't like the way it pulls. But I'll get to, in a minute, why the manual only is kind of an issue. Number two, and this is only kind of a half con to me, it only comes in APS-C. You can't get a full frame anamorphic lens for, well, less than that $30,000 that I just showed. They just don't. They don't exist for $599. It doesn't exist. The plus side of that is I shoot an A7 III and you can turn it into essentially crop mode and it becomes what like an A6000 series would be. The crappy thing about that is a handful of times I've already forgotten to put it back to full frame mode when I've changed lenses. So I say it's only a partial con because when I'm shooting footage, you can't tell the difference. But, but, but. For, for educational sake, I'll show you what this would look like in full frame on a crop sensor. You probably already know, but we'll show, why not? And there we go. So, it's pretty obvious, you get it. And we're back, and you'll also notice the top to bottom aspect ratio has changed. A lot less down here, a lot less up here. You do have to de-squeeze it once you put it into Premiere or whatever whatever editing software you have. So just got to stretch it out a little bit to make that aspect ratio, you know, what you essentially paid for. So again, that con is kind of partial. Crop sensor lens, full frame camera. Using it for film though, not a big deal. Not a big deal. I had another con in mind, but the focus. So the reason why the manual focus situation is such a pain is because this is a crop sensor lens, you can't do the peeping to get razor sharp focus. Dedicated E-mount lenses, when you zoom in, it'll you can you have the option. You can turn it off or on, but you have the option to that that zoom box to really show you if you're getting that razor sharp focus on someone's eyes, whatever your subject is. This cannot do that because you're using a crop sensor lens on full frame. Con wrap up, manual focus, can't zoom peep for sharp focus and crop sensor kind of a con. Not really a big deal if you're using this only for film and footage. So the final question, should you get it? Yeah, you should get it. Cheap, as far as lenses are concerned. Super duty construction, really feels quality and unique. This thing is so cool. It's just fun to, it's fun to play with. All right, that's it. I'm gonna go film some Star Trek scenes.